I'm Dr. Natalie Marks, and we're here with a quick cup of knowledge. Today, I've got Dr. Brooke Nemick, who is the Chief of Staff at Southern California Veterinary Dental Specialty and Oral Surgeries. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. It's good to be here. It absolutely is. And we're here at Western Veterinary Conference, and of course, you're doing a lot um, on the topic of dentistry. There's a lot of people listening that have a lot of questions in regards to how do we really market dentistry for the small animal practice. You know, a lot of us want to add dental radiography, we want to be doing more extensive and thorough um, medicine and oral okay. surgery. Okay. There's a whole bunch, and that's that you can go many different ways. The key is education. Uh, educating yourself, which obviously WVC is a good way to do it, um, but the more you know, the more knowledge you have, the better. Um, the big key to dental radiology is that there's numerous studies that show that you simply cannot practice quality dental medicine without it. Mm -hmm. um, Frank Vistardi did a couple studies where he proved that full mouth x-rays find painful pathology. I see it daily in my practice that it just, it changes everything. And one of the things people really hate is extractions. And every mm -hmm. time I give a lecture, and I lecture all over the place, especially to feline, and I'll be like, who likes cat extractions? And there's usually one or two sick people that actually do <laughs> like cat extractions, and they'll raise their hand. And every single time that those people have raised their hand, I said, do you have dental x-ray? And they're like, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. You can't not hate extractions if you don't have it. So the big key is getting education. Um, and to, to uh, uh, slide into something else that you had mentioned earlier, ed education is lacking in most veterinary schools. So I, at last, count, I think there was seven out of the 29 veterinary schools in North America that actually have a dentist on staff. So people are not coming out with dentistry and they're just saying, well, we just don't have time for those things. So it's a core knowledge base. Most veterinarians are asked to do extractions within a week of, of graduating from vet school and they have no training. So I can give lectures, I can do telemedicine, I can do all this kind of stuff. Take a hands-on class. If you've never had training in extractions, come to the Akinda Center, find some places teaching it, uh, learn how to do it. Those are all great points. Mm -hmm. And you know, on that note, you've you talked about all the things that we want to be saying to clients in the mm -hmm. exam room. And being in general practice, we have 20 to 30 minutes at best, right, with that mm -hmm. client. Yeah. Would you think this is a great opportunity to also empower your paraprofessional staff, right? The veterinary technicians are kind of uh, integral to this, uh -huh, right? To make uh -huh. sure that everything goes smoothly because I certainly don't have time to uh -huh, spend 15 uh -huh. minutes of that 20 minute exam talking about all of these things. So what is your thought on that and how do you utilize your team at your practice to be successful? I'm laughing because it's so funny that it's, it couldn't be more perfect timing for you to ask that question. Oh. Um, I have a thing that I call a dental concierge. And just like you, because I have lots of friends that are general practitioners, and they're, they say the exact same thing. I have 15 mm -hmm. minutes, I have 20 minutes, and in that period of time, you have to take a history, do a physical, deal with the, the problem that, that they're presented for. And I think that's the biggest thing with dentistry, is that 99% of our clients, our patients, are presented for a problem. Mm -hmm. And so your client, not only do you not have time to do everything appropriately, in most cases, but your client is not emotionally, nor financially, invested in the teeth. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start talking about it, you become the peanuts teacher. Wah, 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 wah. But what about his ear, doc? What about his ear? And I'll tell you what, 75% of the time, the tooth is a bigger problem than what they came in for, mm -hmm. but there's no clinical signs they don't care. But there, you mentioned the, you know, the challenge with students graduating, mm -hmm. right? There's six or seven schools that have someone there, but yet all of these others, they're graduating and going into practices where you're saying in a week they're gonna to have to do procedures. Right. So what are some resources that you can recommend to them to get additional training or to feel more supported? You know, you mentioned right. I'm not gonna work here mm -hmm. unless you have you know, these, these um, tools for me. What are, what are some pieces of advice you can give to the graduating students? Well, there's several. Number one would be there are, there are a lot of private practitioner veterinary dentists like myself who allow people to visit. Mm -hmm. And I work extensively with um, Western Veterinary College in, in Pomona. We probably have one of their students every other week that are spending a week, a day, a month with mm -hmm. us. Um, I would say if you're interested in dentistry and your school doesn't offer rotation in it, um, and I know that a lot of them have community practice that do it. I, I love those guys, they're passionate, they're not dentists. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing dentistry the way that we would like it to, in, in many cases, not always. But if you have an opportunity and you don't have a dentist, in, well, first of all, if you have a dental rotation in your practice, I don't care if you're a large animal that you hate cats, take a small animal dentistry That's course. Right. Because I, I have, and this is really the sad truth, um, I have met, gone out with, whatever, many 
female veterinarians that were equine and they're like, I'm not doing small animal. And within three years, they're doing small animal. That's me. <laughs> and they're just like, I'm lost. Dentistry, learn how to do dentistry, number one. Um, so if you don't have it, in, if you do have the opportunity, do it. If you don't have the opportunity, most schools will allow you to do an externship for a week or two. Contact a local veterinary dentist. If you go to avdc.org, which is our website, you can find all the dentists around you. We take visitors all the time. I know the group in Phoenix does. I know that Dr. Bellows down in Florida does. I, I know that most of us will because we're educators. So that would be number one. Um, number two would be the first thing that you graduate, you, you go in there and you're like, I, I need a dental hands-on course. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, there's, there are training centers all over the country. Okendo obviously is doing what I'm doing. I'm already set up to do three, um, March, May, and July at the Okendo Center. They're all the basic ones. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to kind of move that into a level two, level three. But I mean, we've already got that set up. Um, you know, obviously at the, at the conference, all these things are sold out. Um, but that would be number two. And then finally, you know, it's not quite as good as, as hands-on. There's nothing that's gonna replace hands-on uh, when it comes to extractions, um, but books. Um, you know, t telemedicine, things like that can be effective as well. Mm -hmm. um, Self-reading um, can, can do, I mean, I've got books on all of these different things that people can read, uh, especially when it comes to dental radiology interpretation, how to take them. Um, but the one thing I would say that you need to learn hands-on is extractions. And I can, I mean, with an extractions course, we can cut your extraction time in half and decrease your complications and everybody benefits from that. It's wonderful. You're an invaluable resource and mentor, and we're very lucky to have you in the field and gave a lot of great pearls to graduating students and practitioners like myself. So thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of the conference. Thank you very much.